New York appeals court has overturned Harvey Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction. The court says the judge in the trial should not have allowed prosecutors to call witnesses whose accusations were not part of the criminal complaint. The 72-year-old disgraced movie mogul will remain in prison since he is also serving time for a separate sexual assault conviction in Los Angeles last year. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg is vowing to retry the case in New York. We should know Bragg was not in office during the original prosecution. Meanwhile, Weinstein's lawyers say they saw this result coming. We knew that Harvey Weinstein did not get a fair trial. But the Court of Appeals, the highest court in the greatest state, in the greatest country, said today is that, yes, no one is above the law, but no one is below the law either. Jerika Duncan and Julie Randleman are with us now. Jerika is a CBS News national correspondent here with me in Studio 57, and Julie is a criminal defense attorney. Julie, we're going to start with you, though. Explain the foundation for the appeals court decision and whether or not you agree. So I'll start with saying this doesn't surprise me, and I'll be frank with you. Um, it doesn't surprise many of the not only criminal defense attorneys, but actually DAs whose names will remain nameless. Um, I think we were all in a anticipating that this case would be overturned. And basically what their finding was, was that all of the various acts that came in, the, the sexual acts, the misconduct that came in, that were outside of the actual crimes of which he was charged, that the judge went too far in allowing each of those pieces of evidence in. And it became really about propensity, which is not allowed in um, in a criminal trial. Um, and so they basically found that the judge went too far. They also found even as, as significant in terms of the Sandoval ruling, meaning that if Harvey Weinstein were to testify, what evidence of bad acts would have come in? And they found that the judge's decision in terms of all of those bad acts that the prosecution would have been allowed to ask about was too much, too prejudicial, mm -hmm. and that it basically prevented him from taking the stand. And Julie, what you're saying is not unlike what uh, what Jerika, you and I were talking about this morning as soon as it broke. I think for the rest of us who have followed this, uh, um, this story but maybe aren't as familiar with the ins and outs of it, right. it's a huge shock for us right now. Um, so, Jerika, can you talk about the significance of this case being overturned? I think it's significant. Definitely to those who allege Harvey Weinstein abused them and to the two women that were in this particular criminal case. We have yet to hear more uh, from them, but I want to read you a few statements from the silence breakers. This is from a PR company that represents, um, as they say, survivors. It said the news today is not only disheartening, but it's profoundly unjust. But this ruling does not diminish the validity of our experiences or our truth. Another statement coming from Douglas Wigdor's office, who also represented uh, women who accused Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault, said today's decision is a major step back in holding those accountable for acts of sexual violence. Uh, but I did speak to Donna Rutuno, who was the lead counsel on that criminal case not too long ago, and she said this is a huge win for them, obviously, because they believe that there were errors in the way that the judge, as you just heard, uh, allowed certain evidence in. Um, and obviously, Harvey Weinstein maintained his innocence throughout all of this. But what's really important to notice for those who were saying, why are we going so hard on this L.A. case? Because those in the legal community who thought there could be some issues with New York said, well, if there are issues with New York, you can still lean on what happens in L.A. But what happened in L.A. could now be impacted because you have a conviction that's been overturned. That's according uh, to Donna Rotuno, who said that, saying that when you look at the evidence now in L.A., you have jurors that were looking at a man who was convicted. Already convicted. Right. And that's going to bear judgment on what they find. Um, and also important to note that in that L.A. case, it took several days for jurors to reach the verdict, and it was a mixed uh, verdict. You know, they were split on some of those counts. So there's a lot more here, of course, and people now wondering What's next for Harvey Weinstein? It's still uh, to be announced, but I know it's been reported that he has to go to California. We're still waiting to get confirmation on that. Uh, a major development in this story that has captivated the nation. Uh, we're going to continue to dive further into it. For now, we want to thank Jerika Duncan and Julie Rendleman. Thanks.